If you've ever wondered how to create high-speed photos capturing the movement of colorful fluids, then this video is just for you. I'm Matt from Viewfinder, and our goal today is to capture a creative, dynamic shot of red wine being poured into a wine glass. We're going to freeze the ultra-fast movement of the wine swirling into the glass, but we're also going to bring out some of the wonderful color in that wine by illuminating the subject with backlight from two small flashes. So let me show you some of the materials that I'm using today. Keep in mind that many of the items that I'm using here in the studio can be improvised at home, and I'll try to point out a few suggestions as I go. Okay, let's start with the flash. This is really the critical piece of equipment that we need with us today. And I'm actually gonna use two flashes to light my scene. But one thing to be aware of is that you will need that small plastic foot that came with your flash. Um, that allows you to set it on a table or mount it on top of a light stand. The second flash that I'm using is one that I borrowed. It actually doesn't matter whether you have two Nikon or two Canon speed lights. In fact, you can use third-party flash, which comes from another company, as long as you can configure it in slave mode so that it just goes off as soon as it sees a blink from another flash. So that's what I'm doing today. I've borrowed um, an Olympus flash from my wife, and I'm using my Sony flash together with the on camera trigger, which triggers my Sony flash remotely. To put my flash in position where I need the light, I'm going to need a flash stand, or if you wanna improvise, a pile of books or something that you can use to get the flash to the right height and position uh, relative to your shooting setup. So in this case, I have a couple of light stands and that's gonna do the job perfectly. Don't forget that to mount your flash on top of the stand, you may need a flash stand adapter. This is the small articulating joint that goes right at the top of the flash stand and is the connection between the stand itself and the flash. And we'll talk about positioning those stands and flashes relative to the background and the subject in just one moment. The other thing that's uh, quite important for this shoot is that I'm photographing against a white background and I've just improvised that and I've put a piece of white styrofoam at the far end of my little shooting table here. That could easily be um, a bed sheet or a white piece of paper, as long as it's big enough to cover roughly a one square meter area behind your subject, then I think it's gonna work out just fine. The other thing I'm using today, which is uh, quite important for the shot, is some big white bounce cards that I've just improvised out of white styrofoam. And I've got them clamped in place with a super clamp and a universal clamp, but these could easily be positioned with tape or by balancing them somehow on your table at home. And in the wine bottle, you're going to need one of these little pouring things here. It's very difficult to direct the wine into the glass um, carefully and effectively without that little pouring spout thing. I've got my camera on top of the tripod, just about a meter and a half back from the front edge of the table here, and this is gonna give me a great little working environment to do my shot. Okay, so let me just quickly mention why we're using these flats, uh, these reflector, styrofoam reflector boards. The problem with pointing the flash straight towards the background like this is that we've got one part of the background which is quite close to the light, and we've got another part of the background which is further away. And because of that positioning difference, we're always going to have an overexposed part closer to the flash and a less overexposed part, a darker part, further away on the background. And this gradient is not what we want. We want a real smooth, even white glow of light from behind. And that's why we're going to turn this flash this direction and we're going to bounce it off the back of this. And that's just being clipped into place like so to provide the bounce surface. Now, if I have my flash mounted straight up on top of the stand adapter, of course, most of my light's gonna go right over the board, so I'm just going to drop the stand adapter at an angle just to get it into the middle of my bounce surface here. Great, that looks good, and I'm gonna do the same on the other side. Super, so we have our main subject right here. We've got a little bit of distance between where our subject is and where these uh, reflector boards are positioned. Our flashes are right behind the reflector boards and we're shooting right into this white background here. And you'll see that I've got my 70 to 200 millimeter lens on the camera and my tripod is down quite low. I'm basically eye level with the glass. 
And this medium telephoto lens is allowing me to zoom in and do a nice tight shot of the glass. I don't have much more than a couple inches, you know, three or four or five centimeters above the glass to the table. So it's a pretty narrow shot, but that's what we want because we just want to emphasize the action and avoid having too much empty space around the subject. So here's a little tip for you. If you're noticing reflections, annoying reflections showing up on the edges of your glass and you want to reduce those, it's not a problem with uh, the flash power or any of your camera settings. It's probably because you've got the flash, excuse me, it's probably because you've got the wine glass too close to where the reflector boards and the flashes are positioned. And basically, if you think about it like this, if you were the glass and you could see any part of this white surface here or the front of the flash head, then you would be getting that reflection. So just move that glass forward to a point where it can no longer see around the back side of the boards and it's not going to catch nearly as many reflections as before. So let's start with a little explanation as to why the flash is a necessity for doing a shot like this one. Many of you will be familiar at this point with the concept of using fast shutter speeds to freeze athletes at sporting events or capture moving animals in wildlife photography scenarios. And it would be fair to assume that we could achieve the same action stopping result in this wine pouring scenario by simply using one of the camera's ultra fast shutter speeds like a four thousandth or an eight thousandth of a second. The problem is that even our camera's top speed exposure times aren't fast enough in this case. And even if we could shoot with an eight thousandth of a second indoors, which is virtually impossible given the typical amount of light that's available inside, but even if we did decide to shoot with ISO 51,000 at an eight thousandth of a second, we still wouldn't be able to perfectly freeze the incredibly fast movement of the liquid pouring into the glass. We need an exposure time which is even faster than that to freeze this kind of movement. And that's where the flash comes in. So more on the flash settings in just a moment. Let's take a look at the camera settings. The combination of our relatively low ISO 200 combined with a relatively small lens aperture of f11 and a medium fast shutter speed of a 250th are all conspiring to give me a nearly black frame when I do a test shot here with my flashes turned off. That's exactly where I want to start because I want the flash to do all of the illumination in this case. I don't want any help from the available light. In fact, the less available light, the better in this case. When my flashes go off, they're going to illuminate the scene in a lightning fast blink of flash. Okay, so let's talk about flash power. There are several benefits to using the flash to light this subject. First is the speed of the exposure. A typical flash like this may not be the most powerful light source that's out on the market, but there's a reason why they call them speed lights. The blink of light coming out of this flash is extremely fast and it gets even faster as the power level decreases. If I can use my flash at a power setting of a 16th or lower, then it's illuminating this otherwise dark scene at an insanely fast 15,000th of a second. Some speed lights are speedier than others, but the principle is consistent throughout. If you can shoot at a relatively low power level on the flash, then you're gonna produce an even snappier motion freezing effect. And that's one of the reasons why I prefer to do this kind of shoot with two flashes instead of one. With two flashes at 16th power, I can avoid taking my flash up to an eighth power if I need more light. The doubling of lights helps me get greater illumination without compromising my action freezing ability. The other big advantage of the flash is that we can position them exactly where we want so we have much better control over the direction of our light, which is equally important in this scenario. All right, let's start pouring some wine. So as we did a few shots, I just decided to stop and really look carefully at my photos and see if there's anything that I can improve on compositionally. And also check my focus and exposure and just make sure it's all coming out well. And actually what I notice is that all of the pictures that we've taken where the wine glass is positioned at an angle um, have just looked a lot more dynamic. And 
play around with it and see what you like, but I definitely prefer my shots where the glass is angled into the frame a little bit. I also can see by zooming way in on my shot and moving in over the wine that I've got some pretty obnoxious fingerprints in the glass right in front of the wine. The, the fingerprints aren't really showing up against the white background, but if that wine passes behind the fingerprints, then they come forward immediately. So we're gonna have to polish up our glass and uh, try this one again. The other thing that I can tell is that I'm going to be cropping in on the bottom of this photo to eliminate the table. So I'm not too worried about having just a bit of the table in there. But what I decided was, if I'm gonna crop that out anyway, I might as well move my camera position upward a little bit so that I've got more white area to work with up above. And my goal for the next few pictures is to try and get the angle of that wine kind of coming straight from the corner of the shot and making kind of a longer beam or a longer stream of wine rather than having the, the bottle so close to the glass. I just think it'll be a little bit more elegant if we have sort of a stream of wine appearing out of nowhere and boom, landing in the bottom of the glass. So that's the goal for the next couple shots. Create a little bit more distance, get rid of that fingerprint, and move the camera so we've got a little bit more white in the background. I hope you found that video useful, and if you did, we sure would appreciate a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss our next video tutorial. And we've got a lot more waiting for you where that came from, so head on over to viewfindermastery.com where we've got full-length tutorials, thoughtful feedback, and a really fun community of photographers that are waiting for you to join in. And while you're there, go ahead and download our free top 10 purchases guide if you'd like some advice on must-have gear items that won't break the bank.